Finding the domain and range of functions and relations. In this lesson, we'll evaluate the domain and range of functions and relations. In algebra, we have sets in pairs of words that work together to explain things. Domain and range is such a pair of words. The domain is the set of all x or independent values of a function or relation. And if you're guessing, you would probably say, as I now say, that the range of function or relation would be the set of all y or dependent values. Since domain and range are not exactly everyday conversational words, what do I do to keep them straight? I like to think of a couple other sets of word pairs that are associated. I like to associate using the dictionary. Let's consider x and y. What comes first in the dictionary, x or y? Well, x comes before y just like domain comes before range. Let's consider input and output. Which comes first, input or output? Input comes first, so we associate input with domain and output with range. Let's consider the vertical and horizontal axes of a graph. Which comes first in the dictionary, vertical or horizontal? Well, it's horizontal, so horizontal is associated with domain and vertical with range. I hope this helps you remember. It helps me. Let's take a look at this relation. We have points scattered throughout all four quadrants. This relation is called a discrete relation because it exists at specific points and does not span intervals. And the domain is all the x values of the points. And the range is all the y values of the points. Having values in brackets as shown is called using set notation. Notation is a manner of describing things, in this case numbers. There's also verbal notation. The domain of the relation is negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the range is negative 8, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, 3, and 6. Why are there six domain values but only six range values? I won't answer the question, but we'll let you think about it a little. Now let's look at this relation. Since we don't see points on the graph, the relation is not discrete, but rather continuous because it continues unbroken no matter where we go on the graph from left to right. For this relation, we can use five different types of notation to describe the domain and range. Verbally, we can see the end behavior going from negative infinity to positive infinity, shown by the red arrows. So we can say that the domain goes from greater than negative infinity to less than infinity. Also, we can call it all real numbers. Next, we'll look at a number line shown here overlaying the graph. Here is how the domain is shown in red with arrows pointing to negative infinity on the left and positive infinity to the right. So this is the number line notation. This is like smashing the function to the x-axis. And then there's the inequality notation. And for the inequality notation, we can say that the domain can be described as x is greater than negative infinity and less than positive infinity. And now for set notation. For set notation, we place it within brackets. We have x such that x is greater than negative infinity and smaller than infinity. This little vertical line segment after the first x means such that. Or you might see this, x such that x is an element of all real numbers where x is greater than negative infinity and less than infinity. This e looking symbol means is an element of. And this capital R represents all real numbers. I don't see these symbols as extremely important other than I wanted to familiarize you with them so you'll recognize them the next time you see them. Sometimes you might see these symbols on an SAT test or some other somewhere else to try to confuse you. And finally we have interval notation which uses parentheses and brackets to define the set of the domain. Here we have open parentheses, negative infinity, comma, infinity, then close parentheses. Now let's define the range of this relation. Here the top of the graph is marked by this horizontal line segment in red. The red line segment is an upper boundary to the graph. Verbally we could say that the range of this function is equal to or less than 4 or less than or equal to 4. 
We can say this because 4 is an output value for the function and also any real number less than 4. And now we'll draw this relation on a number line. And since this is range, we can tilt the number line vertically to match up with the y values. We have the point drawn at 4 on the number line, and since all real numbers less than 4 are part of the range, we draw the arrow below from that point. So this is what the range of this relation looks like plotted on a number line. In some places you might see a bracket instead of a point on a number line. This would be a down facing bracket to indicate that its a boundary is 4 and is everything less than 4. Is math the same everywhere? Yes, but sometimes the notation is a little different depending on where you are. Again, like we did for the domain, we can smash the relation to the vertical number line parallel to the y-axis. And as an inequality, we would show this with the less than or equal to inequality symbol. y is less than or equal to 4. And in set notation, we have y such that y is less than or equal to 4. Again, that little vertical bar is such that. And finally, in interval notation, we have open parentheses, negative infinity, comma, 4, and then a closing bracket. Here's a notation chart. It has four of the five major domain and range notation formats. The only one missing is the set notation, which is quite similar to the inequality notation. Let's look at this relation. Verbally, we have x is greater than negative 9 because that's an open point at negative 9. And also, x is less than or equal to 7. Now we have the number line notation for domain. On the number line, at the bottom, we see the open point at negative 9, the closed point at positive 7, and the interval between the points filled in represented by the blue line segment. Now for the inequality, we have x is greater than negative 9 and less than or equal to 7. The x is sandwiched between the negative 9 and the 7. And for the set notation, we have x such that x is greater than negative 9 and less than or equal to 7. Very similar, again, to inequality notation. And finally, for interval notation, we have open parentheses, negative 9, comma, 7, close bracket. Now let's take a look at the range of this relation. We take a look at the upper boundary and the lower boundary. We have an upper boundary at y equals 8, and we have a lower boundary at y equals negative 7. So using verbal notation, we say that the range is y is greater than negative 7 and y is less than or equal to 8. And this is our number line notation for the range at the right. We see the open point for greater than negative 7 below, and the solid or closed point at the top for less than or equal to 8. And of course, the line segment filling in everywhere in between. Here is our inequality notation. y is greater than negative 7, and y is less than or equal to 8. Again, we have the y sandwiched in between the negative 7 and the 8. Then we have the set notation, y such that y is greater than negative 7 and less than or equal to 8. And finally, we have the interval notation, open parentheses, negative 7, comma, 8, followed by a closing bracket. One final question, is this relation a function? I don't intend to answer the question, but suggest if you're unsure about whether this relation is a function that you use the vertical line test to check. Now, solve this multiple choice problem. What is the domain of the relation? Stop the video to solve, then start to see if you got it right. The correct answer is C, negative 2. Negative 1, 0, 1, 4, and 7. All the other answers have at least one thing wrong with them. Answer A is pretty tricky, but doesn't work because the graph points are discrete data while the inequality shows continuous values between x equals negative 2 and x equals 7. What is the range of this relation in interval notation? Stop the video and answer the question, then restart to see if you got it right. The correct answer is D. 
the range is greater than negative infinity and less than 6. Now for this problem, which of the given answers does not match the other three answers? Stop the video and solve the problem, then restart to see if you got it right. The correct answer is A. In answer A, it's graphed as greater than 3, while all the others are greater than or equal to 3. Let's look at this last problem. What is the domain of the function? Stop the video and solve the problem, then restart the video to see if you got it right. The correct answer is C in interval notation. X is greater than negative infinity and less than infinity. This has been Finding the Domain and Range of Functions and Relations. Thanks for viewing.